Pops, it's nice to meet you, but it's even better to meet me. Listen, I don't want to upset your rhythm, Cal. But listen to this instead, bro. Late at night, I toss and I turn and I dream of what I need. Hit it! <laughs> You guys ever just sit back and say, man, that was some good editing, and then proceed to take a sip of your Kirkland Signature Reduced Fat Chocolate Milk? I'm sure everyone knows by now that a Jedi's knowledge and skill in lightsaber combat is almost as great as Jimmy Neutron's knowledge of organic compounds. Just a little sodium chloride. Actually, dude, it's salt. That's what I said, sodium chloride. Uh, dude, I missed the part where that's my problem. In Jedi Fallen Order, you get to test your own skill with a lightsaber, which usually ends in you realizing you're an incompetent prick and Samuel Jackson could mop the floor with you. The game has combat very similar to Dark Souls in that if you think for a split second about whether or not the pizza rolls are done, you immediately get game-ended. You play as Cal Kestis, an undercover Jedi who has it made, and by it, I mean crippling depression and an unnatural inclination towards violent tendencies. The first time I played him, he was basically swinging his saber every which way like a tennis racket, killing all the wildlife on every planet, so I decided not to let him use his lightsaber because I didn't want any sand incidents happening. Which is how this video came to be. Can you beat Jedi Fallen Order without a lightsaber? Specifically Cal's lightsaber, gifted to him by Jaro T'Pol. No, screw Jaro T'Pol, dude! I don't need your help! I don't need your gifts! Now you may say this is easy considering you have force push, but trust me, it's a lot more complex than you think. First, let me define the rules. When I say without a lightsaber, I mean you can't use a lightsaber to harm or kill any enemy in the game. I'm also not allowed to parry with it. I'm still allowed to use it as a tool to cut pipes and ropes and stuff, because as of right now, pipe cutting is unskippable. And yes, deflecting blaster bolts still counts as killing someone with a lightsaber. If it didn't, that would be stupid. Also, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this one, but cutscenes where I use a lightsaber don't count. Lastly, unskippable quick time events don't count either, but there's only one that I know of. I played the game in story mode in order to have force regeneration while in combat, which will make a lot more sense later on. I'm also using footage from like three different playthroughs, so if Cal's lightsaber color or outfit just randomly switches, yes, it's all still my footage. That's another command post under Republic control. After staring at the main menu for like five minutes because of the sick music, I started a new game and ran through the tutorial. I really wanted to let Sid the Sloth die, but the game wouldn't let me skip the part unless I saved him. Kinda messed up. Luckily I had some contacts within the Empire. I'm Johnny on the spot, I'll hook you up. I got sent to Death Squad to come and take care of business, but they thought I was a target too and threw me off a cliff onto a train. He needs some milk. I'm pretty sure they stole this scene from Garfield the movie. This is where the first challenge in this run began. How'd you get here? Easy now. Got a stowaway. Hey, you don't need to call this in. Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna attack this stormtrooper. I just fell through his train roof, and now all of a sudden I have the right to attack him? No, this trooper didn't deserve to die. Trooper number, um... This is TK-8190. Yeah, thank you. TK-8190 has no business at the end of my saber. He might be like a beautiful girl with a voice changer, or... <laughs> or a kid that was forced into the Empire. Jokes aside, it seems like the only thing left to do is press X and lose the challenge before you even start the game. But I found out if you mash a bunch of buttons after pressing X, you can roll backwards before hitting him. Despite my efforts, he still had a heart attack from fear and died. I ran over his body and into two more stormtroopers outside. 
I figured I could run past them too, but the door wouldn't open until I killed them. Man, this lightsaber combat focused game really wanted me to use my lightsaber, but I wouldn't give in. I had to find a way to save these troopers too. I decided to turn to the speedrunning community for help. With this new, enlightened knowledge, I was able to keep from using my lightsaber and easily save everyone on the train, just like in Spider-Man 2. Then it was time to fight the second sister. I would have a lot of trouble with her later on, but luckily, this time it was easy. You can actually just let her hit you until you run out of health and it will trigger the quick time event. And since those don't count, boom, first second sister fight without using my lightsaber. Easy peasy. I escaped with this lady that should have had Guinness World Record for farthest eyeball pop, and it was onto Bagano, which is actually really easy. All you have to do on this planet right now is get wall run, and you don't actually have to fight anything to do it. I should mention that I grabbed pretty much all the force echoes I could to level up my XP. This will be very important for later when I need stuff in the skill tree. Also on my first playthrough, I forgot the button for force slow, but I guess you don't actually need it. Then it was on to Zepho to get the second force power, force push. My first playthrough of this section was completely blind, so I had no idea what I was getting into. Since I didn't yet have any means of killing all these troopers, I just had to run past them and hope that stormtroopers always miss. I made sure to meditate at each part even when I was under heavy fire so that I didn't lose my progress. After I navigated my way into the temple and got force push, it took me about three years to get out because I couldn't figure out this puzzle with the balls you have to push around. And it was really annoying getting shot at all the time by these guardians. It pretty much felt like the Destiny King's Fall Raid all over again. Orcs must still be holding threats for us. But once I got out of there, I could finally yeet stormtroopers into the river. Target. A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. But when I got back to the ship, they were being attacked by an ATST. At first I thought it would be okay to cheat and destroy the chicken walker with my lightsaber, then push the driver inside off a cliff and say I didn't actually use my lightsaber to harm a living being, but on my third playthrough I found out I could use force push to throw the bombs the ATSD dropped back at it. This is one of the reasons I played on story mode. If I played it on a higher difficulty it would have taken a whole lot longer. What did you do to my drink? Before moving on, I want to remind you that I was collecting all the force echoes and scanning everything I could to get more XP and skill points. And then it was on to Kashi. I boarded the AT-80 and proceeded to slam the troopers inside into the walls a few dozen times. Now I'm not stupid, but up to this point I was really worried about how to get past this entire AT-80 -AT part without a lightsaber. Let's do this. There were just so many troopers you would have to kill and... Oh wait, I'm literally using guns. <laughs> now here's the big problem with Kashyyyk, the security droid. Are you username ladiesman217? I don't know what you're talking Are about! Are you username ladiesman217? In the Jedi Fallen Order skill tree, you can unlock perks to make your force powers stronger. With force push in particular, there are two upgrades. The first is called mass push and lets you stagger large enemies. And the second is called howling push and lets you actually launch large enemies just like any other stormtrooper. However, you can't actually unlock the second tier until Cal heals his connection with the Force a third time when you get Force Pull on the second visit to Zepho. Stay with me here. And so when it comes to the security droid, the most you can do with Force Push at this point is stagger it, which does no damage to it. So is this the end of the line? Hell no. See, the only reason you need to be on Kashyyyk at this point is to get Overcharge. All that extra stuff where you free the Wookiees, Irrelevant. you actually get overcharged at the very start of Kashyyyk, but you can't get back to your ship because this door closes behind you. Or can you? Welcome back to Speedrunning with Stormtrooper, where I show you the best strategies for speedrunning Jedi Fallen Order. Today, we're going to be looking at Kashyyyk's skip. 
A way to get back to your ship immediately after you get overcharged. You first proceed to get overcharged as normal, then activate this spider and climb up onto this ledge. Do a target lock jump and grab onto this rafter. Walk along the rafter until your head is inside this rock. Go ahead and do a dash strike off this edge to fall outside of the map to a place called the White Abyss. You do need improved dash strike to do this. This is why it was important to gather a lot of XP before coming to Kashyyyk. You need two skill points to get to improved dash strike. Once you are in the White Abyss, do some navigating around invisible walls until you get to a spot where you hear flames. Stick yourself into this invisible corner until Cal's head is like this on the camera and then dash strike. If you've done everything right, you should be back at the area with your ship, although everything is technically still invisible. Go into this door and head back out, voila, everything is loaded again. For a more detailed tutorial, check out Alex Exposito's video, his link is in the description. This has been Speedrunning with Stormtrooper. Now that we've successfully skipped Kashyyyk, it's back to Zepho 2. My next objective was to inspect the giant Zepho statue, where I acquired Skomp Link. I could have proceeded out the normal way and worked my way up the tower, but since I haven't done anything else conventionally, why start now? I got up to this ledge and used Dash Strike to get back to the entrance. I made my way to the second Jedi tomb, passing through a wrecked Venator starship into an Imperial excavation site. And what I found at that site will blow your mind. A chest with a 65 stack of diamonds. Just kidding, what I actually found was more security droids. And Jeff the Heavy Gunner. My name is Jeff. But this time, I had something I didn't have on Kashyyyk. A ledge. With those droids gone, I had access to powered zipline, which I needed to get to the tomb. I also had to fight a purge trooper, but I managed to lure him to the side of a chasm and push him off. Easy peasy. But the biggest challenge yet lay before me. Cal Kestis. How predictable. And that concludes the challenge so far. If you would like a part 2 to this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe as it is a free way to support me and get my video on more people's homepage. This video took kind of a long time to make, not because of the challenge, but because I originally meant for this to be a Jedi Fallen Order without killing anyone video. For those that commented about wanting a tutorial on LEGO Star Wars modding, that will be in the part 2 of the LEGO Star Wars lightsabers video, which is next. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, I'm just going to say... Are you username ladiesman217? I don't know what you're talking Are about! Are you username ladiesman217? Yeah? Where is the eBay item 21153? Where are the glasses?